Good morning, this is Chuck from Monocoque Metalworks. Sorry it's been a while since we did a video. It's been a busy summer, but we are kind of back on track now, making some good progress on projects. And today I'm going to talk to you about these, which are inner valances for E-type bonnets. A lot of people call them the air tubes, because um, they do direct air up to the heater and the carburetors. And so last week, I actually bought out what was left of some bonnet panels from an E-type body shop that had been around for a while. And there were a lot of these in there. I was really happy to get them because these are getting really hard to find now. When I was a kid, we, I worked at a shop where we parted out a lot of E-types and we couldn't give these things away. We had a mountain of these things. I think the going rate on them was like 60 bucks. That is not the case anymore. And so this here is a great original. This is almost what I would call a blast and prime. This is the left hand side, goes in the bonnet, you know, when you're in the car, it's kind of up in there like this, running front to back. This directs air to the heater on the left hand side. These are made up of two parts. We call it the wall, which is this, and then the tube, which is this. Now, when these start to go bad, they'll typically either rust or get bent. It doesn't take much to bend these up. Now, if you come over here a little closer, we're, we haven't scraped and blasted this down yet, but when we do, it's only got one thing or two little things wrong with it. We've got a little bit of rust building up right here, and we will flip this over, drill out a couple of these spot welds, peel this off and do a little patch there, spot weld it back, and then right here, it's got some little dents, and I'll. I'll stick a dolly in there and kind of hammer that and smooth it out. So that, that's an example of a great original. Oh, we got a little, little bit of damage up here too. Also very typical where rust builds up between the flange that's glued to the bonnet and this. So we'll have to cut a little piece out of there and patch that. But again, a great original here. Um, that's the left hand side. Put that over here. This is an original right-hand side that is also in excellent condition. What you want to look for on these is see there's no bub, you know, no rust in here that's building up on this spot welded seam. You see all along here, this is nice and great and flush. Same thing here. Right here, you see it's coming apart a little bit, but only because they don't spot weld that there. So that's very typical of an original piece. Um, and then, you know, right here, we've got a little bit of mangling and I'll just hammer and dolly that out and that'll be great. Um, on this, this is the right hand side. It's shorter and kind of cut off on an angle for that triangular air cleaner piece that's fiberglass that ducks air to the carburetors. But on your um, can that's below that, your air cleaner can has these two tubes that stick out. This ducks air right to those two tubes. Um, on the right hand side, I call this a factory flaw. Come over here and take a look at this. When these are mounted in the bonnet, you've got your, your right hand mud shield is bolted here. Every single one of these is cracked in here because it, it's a flaw. They should have had more welding on here. Um, or something, but instead there's nothing there and it just splits and cracks. I have seen one original in my lifetime that wasn't cracked. It was such a big deal. I took a picture of it. It was out of the guy's house like five or six years ago. Now, when I restore these, I put a little piece of weld on that crack on the back side. I used to put a plate back there, but I, it occurred to me that it was probably a rust trap. So what I do now, come take a look. You know, I'll, I'll weld, you know, these are usually cracked and kind of spider webbed up through here. And so I'll TIG that all up and hammer it and weld it nice. And then I put this big fat bead of weld on here with a MIG welder. I call this the worm. Um, and that just gives you a nice thick area that is not gonna split again and you don't see it, it's on the back side, and also this is all supposed to be either undercoated or have gravel guard on it, so it just blends right in. So I do do that to keep it in good shape. Now, this is an original from a 61 coupe. On the 61s and the early ones, 
this little back flange here is usually bent under the other way and doesn't show. But on the early cars, it's bent out this way and does show. And those are the kind of little details that really make a difference on the early cars for value. On this one, there was some wrinkling in here. And what I did was drill out the spot welds to about here, separated these pieces, because you're never going to get that flat again without separating it. And then I used some hammer and dolly work, a little shrinking, this and that. Got this nice and flat again, and then spot welded it back together. Actually, it looks like I plug welded it back together using the same holes from drilling out the spot welds. And then probably I will take a Dremel tool and just kind of and make some little fake spot weld divots so that all looks good. But again, this is all in front of what we call the bug screen, even though it's got big holes in it, it's more of a bird screen. So you're not gonna see any of that, but again, really needs to be perfect. This is the other side of that 61 coupe. And we actually just noticed this morning, come take a look. This is a factory stamping on the tube. Be a very, it's a very difficult piece to make without the original factory stamp, and I'll show you that in a minute. But you can see right here, See how it's got like this funny little mark in it here and then up here it's a little weird. That is all factory stuff. And again, those are the types of little nuances on an early car that you're going to want to keep that really drive up the value and make it a correct car. So this is a set of restored 61s. Now, when you're working on these, what you typically find is something like this. Obviously, somebody sandblasted this and then decided they were going to get a better one, which was an option 25 years ago, but nowadays it's not. These are very difficult to find. So this one here, the tube is straight. It hasn't been wrecked, um, but you've got some rust here, and somebody has just bashed it mercilessly. Actually... They may have done this to clear an air conditioning compressor because this is kind of where you need to clear things that are bolted out in front of the engine. You know, who knows? But this is a great example of what we call a tube donor. So we, as you can see right here, we make the walls new. Here's a whole stack of them because here's a whole stack of tubes that a couple months ago, Brent drilled these off. We sent them over to John's, had them sandblasted. They're back now, and what I will do sometime, things are getting really backed up around here, but I'll probably come down some night and I'll take these tubes and one by one, I'll doctor up the drilled out spot welds here. You can see there's a little work to be done there. And then I'll hammer this all nice and flat. I'll fix any other issues. This one's actually in great shape. Um, you can see there was never even any heavy surface rust or anything. There's your tear on the right hand side, so I'll stitch that up, hammer it out real nice. I'll put that little bead of weld here so it doesn't happen again on your restored car. And then I'll take a brand new wall, which we make here and you can buy, and we will position this properly on here and spot weld it right on there. Um, it's, it's making it sound easier than it is, but that's what you can do at home if you've got those type of problems. Uh, we can make you a new wall and then you would salvage your tube and then spot weld it or plug weld it on. Just want to make sure you keep the heat down because what, ha what can happen to these in wrecks and in poor repairs is you get it all done and then it kind of comes out like this. And that makes it real hard to put the bonnet together right. So you got to take a lot of care with these to make sure that when you restore them, the wall stays nice and flat, because that's going to help you with alignment when you're putting the bonnet together. So there's a nice little tube. You take this off, you sandblast it, you doctor it up a little bit with a hammer and dolly, you put it on a new wall. Now, in some cases, it's going to be even worse. And where these rust the worst is up here. So this is an example of one that is really bad, but restorable. Um, up here, it's real close to the skin of the center section. And what has probably happened here is that either a bunch of salt has come up in the wheel well and got thrown up here, 
or a mouse or some other kind of rodent has made a nest up in here and stuffed this all full of pine needles, seat cushion material, God knows what else, and then it gets filled with urine. The urine is acidic, eats right through the metal. So this one here looks like a total write-off, but again, it's not wrecked, it's in good straight condition. So you could do the whole tube donor thing with this one if you can repair the tube. Now we can help you with that too. This is an example of a repair piece that we made for this customer to repair this tube. They sent in photos of this piece. We made this repair piece for them. As you can see, it is a perfect fit. It's got the little divot here that goes around that step in the wall, comes down like this. Um, and then our, our thought was that they would cut this off about a quarter inch up. It would overlap this, do a nice little stitch in here, keeping the heat down, and then grind and smooth that. Boom. Then put it on a new wall. What ended up happening with this job was the body, the, the owner was not able to do that work himself. He had this bonnet at a body shop. We sent him all the panels they needed to repair this, but it was more than the body shop could handle. And that's fine. Not all body shops are metal shops. They ended up throwing in the towel and buying a new bonnet. And so all of this stuff ended up coming back here. And I told him, if you're going to send this stuff back, you might as well send me this too. And then someday we'll fix it. As you can see, that day has not come yet, but it will. So here's all of our donor tubes. We're going to doctor them up. Like I said, you can repair these at home by taking off the tube, doctoring it up, putting it on one of our new walls. Here's an example of another patch that we made. You can see this is a beautiful reproduction of this. Um, on this one, customer called in. It was a tricky piece. We made it for them. But I'll tell you a little secret about around here. When we're doing something like this, we make two of them. And sometimes you end up screwing up the first one, and so you'll move to the second one. You can see where this is all bent up, and then you, you, know, you can't do all of that. So this was a seam that got stitched and then welded up and ground down and smoothed. So this customer was all bashed in here. We sent one out that looked just like this. And then our second one came out great too, so it went on the shelf. So that's it about inner balances. Like I said, I just picked up a whole bunch of them left over from a body shop. I was ecstatic to get them. So I do have some decent originals around, maybe an original that's better than yours, that's more restorable than yours, or, um, you can call for pieces or we'll sell you a whole brand new. Whatever you need, we're the source. These don't get a lot of respect because they're an inner piece of a bonnet, but trust me, if these aren't right, you're gonna have a lot of trouble with alignment. Thanks for watching, hope this helps. Have a great day.